Thank you for all having me today. So, I'd like you to imagine that you're given a task at your job, and that task is solving a Sudoku. So, actually I'm just going to, uh, I think maybe it will work a little better if I go back in. Let's see. Yes, so, solving a Sudoku. So for those of you that don't know, a Sudoku, you just get given some numbers, so that maybe the numbers are black, I and mean, then the puzzle is just to put the numbers one to nine in every row, in every column, and in every square. So, has anyone actually tried to do this before? Has anyone written a Sudoku solver? Yes, so maybe this chap over here. So how did you do it? What was your approach? Uh, well, I tried to, you have to solve it a number of different ways. There's, there's, there's like a naive approach where you can just add them up and look for gaps. Yep. And you, start, you start having to do projections, just like you would have, say, a game of chess or something like that. Yep. Yep, so as, as this chap uh, said, I mean, if you just brute force it, it's really not tractable because, I mean, you have 81 squares and there are nine possible combinations in every square. So you have 81 to the nine possible combinations and that doesn't really like work. So you end up writing quite a complicated program which uses the constraints somehow and maybe does like some backtracking where you have to like choose, like, I think I might be, put, be able to put a one here and then I like, try and solve it with a one here and it might not work so I'm after to change to a three or something like that. And it, it, I think it's quite hard to do. And I think there is a, a better way of doing it than that, basically. And I think we can use logic to do it. So specifically a form of logic called propositional logic. Um, so this is a definition of a proper, what a proposition is, basically. Um, and I don't think it's that helpful, really. So maybe I would use this one. So all propositional logic is really is just a way of talking about things that can be true or false. And we just build a logic out of just true and false. Um, it's kind of like Booleans in, in a programming language, if you had a programming language just with Booleans, really. Um, so we start off in proposition logic with, with these things. So these are just atomic propositions. So they're the simplest possible things that can be true or false, basically. So the first three here are just kind of facts about, about like our world, about life. And then maybe we have the constant true so that's the atomic proposition that's just always true. And the constant false, which is always false. And then maybe we also just have like kind of a cell. So this is something that can be true or false. And we decide what meaning to give it based on just on the problem. Um, and then we can take our atomic propositions and we can build formulae out of them, basically. So we can build a formula not A. So if A is a, a formula in proposition logic, then not A is just the formula that's true when A is false and false when A is true. Uh, we can have A and B. So this is just the formula which is true when A is true and B is true. Uh, A or B, true when A is true or B is true. And finally, this last one, if A, then B. So this one is the only one that's a little difficult to understand, but I think it's, it's not too bad. So what's the meaning of, of this statement? Well, it's true when it's more than 30 degrees outside and when Neil went to the shops. But it can also be true if it's just less than 30 degrees outside. So, I mean, that's kind of an arbitrary definition. So it, it, it's true when the right-hand side is true always, or if the left-hand side is, is false. Um, and yeah, that's kind of arbitrary, but it makes this connective quite useful, basically. So you might be asking, how is this all relevant to Stoku? And the answer is that basically, at the moment, it's, it's not at all. <laughs> but that's OK. That's OK. So. To solve Sudoku with propositional logic, first we need to think about kind of a set of facts where if, if we knew they were, whether they were true or false, we could, we could extract a Sudoku solution from them very easily. So first we're thinking about kind of which atomic propositions do we need. Um, so the ones that I've chosen, I mean, I'm not saying that it's the only way of doing it, but, but this seems sensible, I think. So we just, the, the facts are whether the cell in row i and column j holds the number k. So we have, and we, we, we'll write x, i, j, k a bit further down the line. So we might have x, 1, 1, 5. And all that means is that there's a 5 in this cell. So if it's true, there's a 5 in the cell. And if it's false, then there's not a 5 in that cell. Um, so this is kind of what it might look like in, oh, wait, hang on, sorry. So um, I can show you with the library that I'm using how this, this works. So I can, it's OK, because. Uh, Ah, perfect. Okay, so if I'm very careful here, maybe it'll work. 
So I'm using a library here called CafeSat. And uh, what we can do here is we can just define a, uh, a, a few variables like this. And then we can write a formula, uh, maybe. And uh, all we do is we just build up a formula in, in memory, basically. <laughs> Um, and it provides nice overloads for ands and ors and not. Um, so you, you just write what looks like a normal Boolean expression and it builds the formula up in memory. So, oh, I have to do this again. Terrible. In, in Scala, this is what, what I just said, was talking about before might look like. So um, a proposition for every row, every column, and every value. So yeah, so we just have for all numbers from one to nine, for row, column, and value, uh, we generate a propositional variable, and here we just give it a name. Um, and we also store the row, column, and value, just so we can kind of select different formulae out, different, different propositions out later. Um, yeah, and it just, it just has that formula. So, uh, so ne next, what we need to think about is what constraints kind of affect a single, a single square? Because we've got the, the atomic propositions, but we need to encode the rules of Sudoku in our, in our language. Uh, so first up, uh, we need some helpers. So these are just, this just takes a, a sequence of formulae and puts an and between them. Uh, and this one, any, it takes a sequence of formula and puts or between them. And then finally, this one, often it's quite useful to say something about kind of every combination of row, column, and value. So we might want to say that uh, the formula for a certain, for every cell implies some other formula. Um, and this just lets us do that, basically. Uh, so I think maybe the first rule of Sudoku is if we have a value, uh, if we have a value in row i and column j, and it's k, then we can't have another k in the same row. Uh, so that's just that's just a, from the rules of Sudoku. I think you can argue, argue that. So this is what we, how we might express this in form, in in, uh, in propositional logic. So this is uh, in the first column of the row. If we have, have a one, then it must not appear in the second column, the third column, or the fourth column up until nine. And the same if we have a, if, if we have a two, then it, it must not appear in the second column and third column, and so on. And then if we have a, a one in the second column, then it can't appear in the first column or the third column, or, or so on. Um, so in Scala, we can kind of encode this using the helpers that we had before. So here we're just saying for every combination of row, column, and value, and then we're saying, if, if the proposition is true, then none of the other propositions in that row for that value can be true. Um, and this, this generator just kind of selects those ones, basically. So the same row, the same value, but not the same column. And yeah, we're saying that none of them can be true. Uh, and also, we can write the same thing for columns. So this one looks really very similar. We just flip the not up here, and, uh, and that works. And then we have the final constraint, kind of, which is uh, that they must not appear in the same square. And this also kind of has a, quite a similar form. So we just define this helper here. So this takes A and B. And this is either ac across the square or down the square. Um, so it could be a row or a column number. Um, and it just tells you whether, like, for a given row, pair of rows or columns, whether they're in the same kind of big three by three square. Um, and then here it looks it looks quite similar, except the constraint is just that they have to be the rows and columns have to be in the same square, um, and it must not be the same proposition. And we just we just select out the proposition, and then we're saying yes, exactly. So if 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 it's the if the proposition is true, then none of the other propositions for that value can be true. Um, yes. So there's kind of one more. So at this point, really, we can we can try and build a model out of this, and kind of we have encoded the rules of Sudoku but the problem is that uh, uh, a valid solution is that to set them all to be false because all we've said here is kind of if this is true then these other things must not be true so it's, it's valid to have nothing true at all really um, so we have to have one more constraint and that's just that every cell must hold some some value so here we just select kind of uh, for the, the, just the value for every every cell so this is in the top left cell it must have a one or two or three or four up to nine and then the same for the the, the, one, the one, one across, and then all the way down to the bottom right corner. We say, like, that must have a value too. Um, and that one looks a bit like this. 
So we're saying here we're just selecting all the values for a given cell. And then we're saying uh, one of them must be true, at least one of them. Um, and then we're saying that for, for all cells, they must hold a value. <coughs> uh, so yeah, this is our model. So we just take all of our constraints and we say they must just all be true. And it's just a formula. So this is not doing any magic, really. It's just building up a really big, complicated expression like, like these, just in memory. And it's really big. I mean, with this library, you can't actually print it because it's got too many variables. But there's one more thing we need to do. So this isn't that interesting either, because if we solve this, we'll just find a valid Sudoku. And that actually works, which is quite nice. Um, but what I did is I uh, went on Google and I just typed in uh, world's hardest Sudoku. And there's no internet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> should have thought through. But uh, I found one, and uh, all we do basically is we just say like the the propositions for this partial solution must be true. So for example, there's an eight in the top left corner, and there's a three kind of three across and two down, and and so on. So this is the final thing we get. So I, I didn't actually show this one because it's quite similar to the others. It's not that interesting. Um, and now. What we want to find is what we call a satisfying assignment. So this is basically just uh, the values of x, i, j, k that are true. So there'll be, well, we hope that there'll be one true x, i, j, k for every cell. And then if we ex ex extract the, the, the value of k, then uh, it will tell us what values are in, are in which cells in the Sudoku. And basically, I think at this point, really I haven't made it any easier because finding one of these is also really hard. However, the good news is that someone else has written the software to do this for you. So this, this problem, which is really hard, I mean, you just, you just download some code off the internet and you can just, you can just get something to do it. And it's, it's pretty fast as well. So uh, here is kind of my overall solution if I, uh, if I enter presentation mode. And uh, it's pretty much just like exactly what I, what I showed you. So we generate the props here. Uh, and then, you know, we take, we say the, the, the values in the rows must be unique, the, the value in, values in the column must be unique, they must be in the same square, and then every cell has a value, ooh, maybe not that, every cell has a value, and then hit, this is the bit for the partial solution, and then we generate our model, and then we say, solve the model. Uh, and this does actually work, as I can hopefully show you. So if I just do SBT run. This is SVT being very slow. The solver is really fast, trust me. There we go. So it solved the world's hardest Sudoku. And it takes about 100 milliseconds. And I think this will work for all Sudoku, pretty much. I mean, that was the world's hardest one, so the other <laughs> ones are easier, I think. Uh, and basically, I think this is a really nice approach to solving problems. Because I think the program that I wrote is, is actually kind of simple, really. So th this is just a formal way of talking about the rules of Sudoku. And I think like everyone understands them because it's like a simple puzzle, and the formalism like isn't isn't that hard to understand. I, I don't think, um, and it's it's just a, a like it's a you're writing a program to generate these, and I just don't think that that's too hard. And then the the hard bit, you know, someone else has already done it, and uh, it turns out these are not useful only for for puzzles. So uh, people use them a lot for analyzing programs, for instance. So um, there's ways of encoding like program flow <coughs> in propositional logic, and there's even solvers for uh, more complicated logics. So uh, this one, SAT, uh, it, it's very simple. It only talks about true and false. But we can also introduce like numbers into it. So you can say, find me a, an x less than 5 such that x squared equals 49. And uh, you just say, find, find it for me. And it will just go off and do it, which is uh, pretty nice, I think. Um, so I'd really encourage you to like have a play around with it. I mean, I don't think it's too hard to use. And it's, uh, it's definitely a good thing to have in your toolkit if you like solving problems. Um, so the usual spiel about hiring. Uh, I work for Football Radar. It's a great company to work for. Uh, and we're always hiring people who like Scala. So I would encourage you guys to apply. Uh, and you can, there are a couple of us here. So just grab us if you, if you want to talk to us. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Uh, what's the name of that library? So th the one I'm using, the one I'm using, oh, sorry. The question is, uh, what's the name of the library I'm using? So the one I'm using is called uh, CAFESAT, uh, so C-A-F-E-S-A-T. 
um, it's like this. I can get it on the screen. <coughs> <coughs> so the question is, is the SAT solver library written in Scala? And uh, this one is actually written in Scala, yes. Um, I would say it's probably not the best one. So uh, there's one called uh, Z3, but uh, this one had a really nice Scala DSL, so I, I use that instead. Okay, so that's a problem that type of problems with uh, library. Uh, Yes, so this is, uh, the question is, uh, can you solve Prolog problems with this library? Yeah, is it, is it, uh, how does it compare with Prolog? So I think what, I mean, I I'm, I'm don't know that much about Prolog, but I think uh, Prolog basically expresses a, a kind of a form of logic which is different to proposition logic. So I think it's not stronger than proposition logic and it's also not weaker, there's just different features in it. So, and it, and it's, it solves that Prolog, I think. So I think, you can express many puzzles in Prolog, and you can also express many puzzles in proposition logic. And you know which one you choose depends on kind of the, the problem. It's a bit unsatisfying, but that's what I can do, I guess. Yeah. So, is there a limit? Because generally, sets are NP problem. You can't solve. Them. Yes. So the question is: Is, is there a limit? And uh, SAT is an NP, NP complete and NP hard problem. So in general, you can't solve it. And so this is a really interesting thing, actually. So. Uh, what, what, what was just said there is, is true. So in general, there's no. In general, it takes two to the n time to solve a uh, a, SAP, a SAP problem. So there's there's no better approach than brute forcing in, in general. Uh, so obviously, like f doing that for Sudoku is intractable, and in, in the real world, people use SAP for like really really big problems. So the the interesting thing is that although it's two to the n time in the worst case, it seems like for in the real world. Uh, like SAT solvers now are good enough that they don't hit that case. And uh, no one really knows what it is, but it's quite nice, so quite helpful. <laughs>